Why do I want to become the chair of the African Union? Um, one, because uh, I'm an African. And secondly, I also think that um, based on my experience uh, over the years, I, I, I have the ability to go to this institution and transform it. African Union, you know, as a history, as the founding of African Union uh, in Addis Ababa in 1964. The, at that time, the colonial call was first Africa must be free. So it was formed more or less as a liberation movement to liberate Africa. The second conference which was in Cairo, the issue of African unity and formation of continental government was very central. If you read what Kwame Nkrumah said, Abdel Nasser, Haris Selassie, Malimu Nyerere, and Kazalika, and so on. But then at that time there were two schools of thought. Those were saying continental government now. But those were saying, no, you need to go gradually. First begin by building regional blocks. And regional blocks become the building uh, un units to the continental government. That is where there's a, a, two different schools of thought. One led by Nkrumah and NASA. The other one was Valimu Nyerere and uh, people like uh, uh, Senghor of Senegal and so on. Uh, but the, that's how the, 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 the blocks were built. The East African community was informed uh, thereafter. The community tried for a long time, but there were differences which emerged as a result of that community collapsed. I was myself here in Dar es Salaam the day the community, community collapsed. We had come down here for a conference in Dar es Salaam on the East African Airways. Then the following day the East African Airways could not take off. We had to fly back on Egypt Air, Egypt Air to Nairobi. After that, because of differences, the border between Kenya and Tanzania was closed many years. To travel from Nairobi to Dar es Salaam, you had to either go to Addis Ababa and get a flight, or go to Lusaka and connect to Dar es Salaam. People suffered seriously as a result of this. Uh, but then, that is history, it's a long history. Eventually, councils of goodwill prevailed, and eventually the community was re-established. And we are here where we are today. But now, regional integration is important as a building block to a continental unity. It's very, very important. But uh, the AU, in my view, is uh, an institution that can do much more than it's doing today. And that is why I want to go there. The other one is the issue of security. Peace. There can be no development without peace. So you need peace. The African Union has got what they call the Peace Fund. That Peace Fund has not been properly developed. Some countries made contributions there, but it is still very little. You need to expand that fund so that Africans can be able to deal with issues of conflict in the continent themselves. Resolutions of, of past I was silent in the guns by 2020. It was just 
on paper. You still have a lot of guns around. So see how you can use the peace fund to be able to help to bring peace across the continent. That's also one of the things that I intend to, to promote. Africa is the richest continent on the planet Earth in terms of resources. It is a paradox that the richest in terms of resources is also the poorest in terms of living conditions of the people. So you can actually make a paradigm shift and change this. You can change this and make Africa also one of the most developed continents. I usually talk of the story of the African lion. And I will conclude with this. The story of the African lion. The African lion is talking to the Asian tiger. Telling the Asian tiger that you, Asian tiger, you have done for too long on the stage alone. The European bear retreated long ago to the polars. The American panther is also on the retreat. But I, as the African lion, have been asleep in the Congo forest. But now I'm awake, bounded by the mountains of Kilimanjaro to the east and the Atlas to the west. The rivers, the Gambia, the Limpopo, the Niger, the Zambezi, the Nile, and the Congo. I'm surrounded by the African bauxite, African iron ore, African copper ore, African gold, African diamonds, and African forests. And we will transform all this wealth, the, all these raw materials into wealth and change and transform the lives of my people and claim the 21st century as an African century. End of story. Thank you. <laughs> then we're dealing with open skies, the air transport across the continent. As you will know, this, at the moment, Air transport is a very expensive thing on the continent of Africa because uh, you don't have air traffic control that is centralized. To travel across the continent, you have got to get permits from country to country to travel, which is not a case like in Europe. In Europe, they have got one air traffic control so that once you've got it, you can fly over all those countries to your destination. I'll give you an example. Recently, I was going to the funeral of the president of Namibia. And from Nairobi, the you get an, uh, the permit to fly over Tanzanian airspace, DRC, Zambia, uh, Botswana and Namibia. I spent three hours waiting to get clearance to be able to fly. The other time I was in Dar es Salaam, wanted to go to Niamey in Niger. I spent ten hours in the, my hotel waiting because I had to get an overflight uh, permission over Uganda, DRC, Central African Republic. Cameroon, Nigeria, and Asia itself. This is what the issues that we are dealing with. To be able to get one continental air traffic control so that you can be able to travel much more cheaply and freely on the continent of Africa. 
Even commercial airlines have to pay this. That's why the air fares in the continent are too expensive. So dealing with this and also dealing with airports, proper airports and runways is an issue that we are dealing with.